Good morning. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I'm super excited to be able to introduce this session to you all. Uh, before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Ben Tyson. I'm the head of sales enablement for our SEM partners at Google. Uh, my roles and responsibility include product training sales and implementation training to our premier partners like White Shark Media. Now let me introduce the session. Today we're going to talk about how to break into the AdWords Hispanic market and let me introduce you to the experts that will be taking you through this journey. First, Francesca Pujols, will, uh, who is the senior U.S. of multicultural at Google. She will discuss the U.S. Hispanic consumer behavior. She'll then pass it on to Leo Marin, who is the account manager for the multicultural team at Google, and he will take uh, and take you on a journey and talk about some specific optimization tips when considering to reach that Hispanic marketplace. And finally, uh, Tony Suarez, the director of search engine optimization at White Shark Media, will talk about how you can apply what we was just discussed in the webinar with real case scenarios from two of White Shark Media's case studies. Now, before I get there, uh, I'd like to tell you that sit tight till the end of the session because White Shark Media is offering a, a, a fantastic uh, resource for everyone who's on this uh, webinar today just for attending the call. Before I pass it off to Francesca, I'd like to give a high-level intro into why partners actually exist in the Google ecosystem. What we quickly found about five to six years ago was that the mental model of consumers was shifting quite significantly and they were becoming more and more sophisticated with the types of content that they wanted to engage with. Well, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but as you as consumers get um, more sophisticated with the types of content you're interacting with, it causes a chain reaction on the back end of Google where our, our platforms, our products, etc., we have to become more sophisticated to meet your mental model as a consumer. We've reached a point today where we firmly believe that it's almost impossible for a small to medium-sized business to manage an effective AdWords campaign with a good return on investment. Hence the reason why we now have um, created this premier partnership program with phenomenal digital marketing agencies like White Shark Media, who we supply ongoing training to, uh, as well as best practices around specific optimization techniques. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce Francesca Pujols. Francesca? Here I am. Thank you so much for having us. So just to get us started, we uh, we think the best way to really uh, start the conversation about Hispanics and how they're engaging online and what's the best way to communicate with them, we wanted to get into a little bit about some of Google's work in the space. And for so long, we've been getting questions from clients about really what the role of culture and language was online when it came to Hispanics. You know, are Hispanics landing on English websites and receptive to that information? Or how many Hispanics are even searching in Spanish and then landing on English content? So what's really that experience online? Our team commissioned a study with our research partners at Ipsos to really tackle some of these burning questions. We made sure to, of course, have a representative sample in the U.S. of Hispanics accounting for region, age, ethnic background, language segments, and more. So we've been able to really cut this data in so many ways. And we made sure of two things. One, that our sample was a digital one. We wanted Hispanics that were online, whether they would be on desktops, tablets, or smartphones. And number two, we wanted respondents that had made a purchase in the last six months. We wanted that decision maker in the household. And as you'll see, we'll take a look at some of their purchasing decisions. And we took a time to take a closer look at nine different verticals. CPG, restaurants, finance, insurance, M&E, travel, retail, pharma, and telecom. So that's a lot of verticals. And we really took the time to do that because we know that the purchaser in a category such as finance might be using language very differently than someone who's purchasing in retail. And we'll make some call outs throughout the, the deck to show you what some of those differences really were. He will start off talking a little bit higher level about how are Hispanic consumers consuming language off translate to how they're consuming content online. And one of the things we learned is that that offline consumption of language does not necessarily hold true online. In fact, 20 28% of our respondents said that they're Spanish dominant in the household. 
And when we see their, how they're self-identifying in regards to their language usage online, only 16% of digital Hispanics were Spanish dominant online, meaning that they're using Spanish always to mostly. And this isn't a surprise, right? The online landscape hasn't necessarily been bilingual in its history. Only now are Latinos you know, really engaging with content in Spanish because it's being made available through time. 31% of digital Hispanics are English dominant in the home. And online, 52% of them say that they're English dominant. So they're using more English online. What does that even mean? The way we think about Hispanics offline is very different to how they're behaving online. The online space is really allowing Hispanics to be fluid in their language consumption. And digital Hispanics are in fact moving across language very easily. Not only are they consuming content in English, 94% said that they're comfortable consuming English content online. That's huge. Now don't get too excited yet because I'm not saying that English language is the way to go. Not yet because this is what they said across at least one activity. That's inclusive of communicating, sharing, shopping, research, and finding quick information. So a variety of different actions. But more Hispanics are really comfortable on the web in English. The interesting other side of things is that two thirds of digital Hispanics have used Spanish to look for information on a search engine. That's pretty phenomenal. I'm bilingual Hispanic. I speak Spanish at home. I use a mix of both languages with friends and I mostly speak Sp English at work. Although I'm very lucky to work with a lot of Hispanics. I might be reading the Wall Street Journal and People in Español, but I'm searching online for recetas en español, so recipes in Spanish, or even looking at that latest Nikki Jam video. This is our reality online. Hispanics don't need to make a choice when it comes to language because they can experience it in both English and Spanish. And as we mentioned, those call outs for specific categories for telecom and finance, it was three in four Hispanics that were using Spanish on a search engine. What does this mean? Is the digital space really allowing U.S. Hispanics to be truly bilingual? So Spanish dominance come into the U.S., they're adapting to becoming Americans, and are less likely to expect the web to be in Spanish. So if your brand is in English, it's likely that they'll find you. As for that English dominant, they're accustomed to worlds in English. Maybe they were born here, but they'll, they're still searching in Spanish. And we see that from their self-reported behavior, and we see that on our end as well. So there's really an, ex an opportunity to experience their culture online in language. That's what we found out about this study. The culture was the one thing that resonated across all these language profiles of Hispanics in the US. So instead of thinking of these different language buckets that we usually do, English dominant, Spanish dominant, that doesn't need to be, to be the way that we think of Hispanics online. Because 41% of digital Hispanics are feeling favorably towards brand that includes aspects of their Hispanic culture in their advertising. 88% are paying attention to those online ads that include Hispanic culture, regardless of the language that it's in. It's ads that break through the clutter and are engaging in a very authentic way. And lastly, 70% of these digital Hispanics say that it's important that a website has content that is relevant to them as Hispanic when they're using online sources to gather information about a purchase. That's huge, really high numbers, and across the board we're seeing English dominant, Spanish dominant bilinguals are consistently saying that culture is the way to engage them. We'll talk a little bit later about how language fits into that. If you remember that 70% in the previous slide, this is a call up for specific categories such as healthcare and CPG. Categories that of course the, the primary decision maker is probably thinking of their family in mind. 77% of that healthcare purchaser say saying it's important that a web page has content to them that's relevant as a Hispanic, and 80% for CPG, so that was actually the highest across categories. It's important that a brand's web page is speaking to them in a culturally relevant way. So we consistently get questions from clients about culture, what are those cultural elements that connect, and how can I really engage this audience effectively throughout my communication strategy. These are the top four cultural elements out of the several that they had to choose from. We asked respondents what was making them feel most comfortable and connected to their culture. This is what popped. Food, traditions, holidays, family. And you know this, this is no brainer. Food, they're living in the US, but they don't forget their Hispanic ingredients and flavors throughout the day. In regards to traditions and holidays, they're celebrating Halloween, they also have El Dia de los Muertos, and even American holidays such as Thanksgiving, they're finding ways to incorporate their Hispanic culture through either the food they're including, 
um, or that the way that they're celebrating. So when it comes to food for Thanksgiving, for instance, they might have that full-on turkey meal, bringing the family together, but they may be choosing to use the stuffing from their country of origin, and we'll call that relleno. They have big families, and they enjoy quality time with those extended family members. So these are some of the things that matter to them, and brands have the opportunity to leverage those insights around the Hispanic culture to create those deep connections with their Hispanic consumer. And just to get a little bit more specific on this slide, we really wanted to get a sense of what's appropriate for your brand, which is what you might be thinking. What, how do you make a call for what content needs to be on your website, on your advertising, or do you need that extra photo shoot to capture Hispanic faces in your marketing strategy? So we wanted to get a little bit deeper, and this is the strategic level. What does it mean to be culturally relevant throughout that creative process, whether it be a brand's website or even your advertising? Number one, find the most important was topics and product features. So this is means really include those topics specific to them as Hispanics in the U.S. because it's not necessarily a LATAM strategy. You want to think about what are those nuances that Hispanics might be experiencing living here in the U.S. What features of your product will resonate with Hispanics? Second up and very closely related is visuals. This is super important and actually really easy to do. They wanted to see they want to see themselves reflected. So thinking back on that extra photo shoot we were talking about to accurately reflect this audience, if you have the resources, it'll definitely make the difference. This is an audience that wants to see themselves reflected as heroes. And they, they do that through um, the website and seeing images of people that look like them and the same thing throughout their advertising. Next up, you'll see language. So it's up there, not necessarily number one, it's ranked number three, but it's still a signal naturally. Speak to them in the words that make sense. We always tell our advertisers, don't directly translate. Take the time to learn what some of those language nuances are and use them well. Of course, Hispanics might be coming from different ethnic origins across the US, we know this, um, and they might be using language very differently. We're consistently looking at search behavior to see what are the, the words that will most resonate with this audience, so I encourage you to look at those insights as well. Followed up is entertainment, which is we know Hispanics love their music, their movies, it's a huge passion point, and it connects. So make that creative fun, entertaining, and come back. And lastly, influencers and testimonials. Include people that will connect with this audience. And it's no longer just about celebrities. You can also be inclusive of content creators, bloggers, all these people online that are really making authentic connections, being who they are, and having a one-to-one -one conversation with consumers. We also know that this online experience is vital to Hispanics in the U.S. It's actually the preferred method to gather information for their purchase, above family, above TV, and above radio. And to say that about Hispanics is a lot because we know how much they feel about their family. How much? 20 percentage points higher is their reliance on online sources versus their reliance on TV. And some categories where online sources were the highest include travel, tech, telecom, retail, and entertainment. And that gap of 20 percentage points that we saw in the previous slide becomes even more pronounced in categories such as retail and auto, where that gap is about 25 percentage points, meaning that these consumers, these purchase, purchasers within the retail and auto category are really reliant on online sources to gather information. Online was actually deemed important throughout the entire purchase cycle, from the moment they're inspired to search online or to consume content online, to when they're in the funnel and actively researching, and even when they're ready to take that next step and convert online. Nearly half of them are using online sources to even purchase. Research across all categories was deemed uh, the most important and actually the most important for the auto category, where it was instead of 81%, it was 87%. What we know about online is the ability to capture the power of intent of consumers. And when Hispanics are online, they're paying attention. In fact, 66% of digital Hispanics say that they pay attention to online ads versus 47% of general market. So you see just how likely they are to be paying attention. They're in fact, not at all jaded by advertising. For them, it's all educational and entertainment. So make sure those elements of fun and passion points are included because they're likely to be paying attention. And for those who remember the ad, 93% of them are taking an action. And that obviously varies, but we have a couple of them here on the slide. Number one, in terms of actions being taken, is they're actually going back and searching some more. So searching on a search engine, 
Number two is they're actually going directly to your company's site. And lastly, they're making a purchase. Search is a huge part of that online experience for Hispanics. 86% of Hispanics are using search to gather information about their purchase. We'll talk a little bit about um, the search behavior we're seeing on our end, but this is what people are saying. They're searching all the time, and most of it is happening on their mobile devices. And we see on our end that in most categories, 70 to 80% of the traffic on search in Spanish is coming from mobile devices. And you'll see here that 68% of digital Hispanics who search are searching on mobile. So that means they're doing it in the home, out of the home, in the store. It's really important to be active and be present. So to complement a lot of this Ipsos data that we've mentioned, we wanted to show you a little bit about what we're seeing on our end. And this is growth in Spanish queries from 2011 to 2014. And you'll see in just a few years the, the huge growth that we're seeing across categories when it comes to Spanish queries. And in the categories you see below, health, telecom, retail, that tremendous growth, that triple digit growth in some cases it be, is being driven by the fact that so many advertisers are taking the time to put relevant Spanish content online. The more Spanish content becomes available, the more we're seeing Spanish queries continue to grow. One thing we really wanted to tackle throughout this study was to get a sense of what that landing page experience is really like. Because for so long we've heard from advertisers that there was really a barrier to entry into the marketplace because all these advertisers didn't have a Spanish website, they didn't have that content online in Spanish. So as a brand, they didn't think that they were necessarily ready to engage this audience in the right way. Like, talk to me in two years when I have all that ready. And in fact, we actually asked, how do these Hispanics that are searching in Spanish and clicking on a result, what's that experience when they're finding that website is in English? And we see that 60% said that they're fine with it which is no surprise, as we saw earlier, this is a consumer that's highly comfortable in English um, and is definitely able to engage with your, with your landing page if that's the case. There's other ways to, in fact, be culturally relevant throughout the landing page if you choose to go the English route, and that's through those, those visuals, those product features that we mentioned. We'll see really how, how comfortable are they, because we're seeing for a couple categories, such as entertainment and restaurants, that are naturally very visually very visual categories, they're even more okay with landing on an English site. 74% of that entertainment purchaser is okay on English, and that makes sense, right? We're seeing a lot of those trailers in the authentic language that these videos or these movies are going to be shown in, so entertainment is, uh, you know, they're, they're comfortable in English when it comes to landing pages. And for restaurants, another visual category, they're looking at food items, they're looking at that larger table to accommodate the bigger party. 72% of them are okay on landing on English sites. So we've seen that Hispanics are okay with English content online, and 60% of them, on average, are fine landing on English sites. But we do see language as an added value. When looking for Spanish content and landing on an English website, there's still one in five digital Hispanics that'll go back and look for a Spanish website instead. There continues to be an appetite for Spanish content for that Hispanic decision maker. So whatever you choose, works best for your brand, make sure that that experience online that you're giving to digital Hispanics is a seamless one. If you don't have the Spanish content, make that site culturally relevant. If you don't have some of your content in Spanish and you want to keep that user informed, you might want to give them a call out that the content's about to change to English on that online website. And lastly, we always recommend to make sure that communication strategy is existing across all platforms and devices because they're, they're all over. Just to round us out, we wanted to leave you with a, key, a few key takeaways um, in regards to our overall study around the role of culture online. Number one, you know, we saw that digital Hispanics are, that digital space is really allowing Hispanics to be truly bilingual online, regardless of the language that they're consuming offline. They're in and out of language, so it's really important to be really surrounding that consumer wherever they are. Second, culture relevance is key, regardless of the language that you're engaging with them. Find out what are those nuances with your Hispanic consumer in your category. How are they using your product differently? How can I connect with them? You want to make sure you're highlighting a lot of this. And lastly, we saw they're really going online to inform themselves throughout their purchasing journey. So it's important to have that presence and that communication strategy really reflected on that online experience. And just to pass it on, we're, this is a little bit more theoretical. We wanted to give you a sense of what we're really seeing on our end and what are some best practices when it comes to setting up a great search campaign to engage Hispanics online. So I'll pass it on to Leo. We'll speak a little bit more about that. Great, thank you, Francesca. So as Francesca said, let's take 
some of these learnings and see what they really mean at the tactical level as it relates to Google AdWords and search. Uh, so to begin here, we really think, well, how do we engage this audience? And what we've noted at Google is that there are three key behaviors online um, that we have seen for the last couple of years. Uh, to begin with, we know that there's a Spanish dominant consumer. Uh, think of somebody that perhaps speaks Spanish as their preferred language, searches in Spanish, and pretty much lives uh, in Spanish. And so when you're setting up your campaigns, it's important to think about that and really leverage not only the language of the words or the terms that are being searched, but also the browser. Um, for example, I'm a Hispanic and my mother doesn't speak English, so we have set up her phone and her computer to have Spanish browsers. And so this user would be Spanish terms or, or searches or keywords uh, set to the Spanish browser, and you can capture some of that traffic there. Next, we have what we would consider an English dominant bilingual user. It's the English dominant bilingual user who may keep their, their settings, their phone settings or their computer settings in English, but may frequently search in Spanish. So that, that would be somebody like me, for example. I, I don't change the settings on my, on my browsers at all, but I do occasionally search in Spanish. Lastly, we have the Spanish dominant bilingual user, and this could be somebody that perhaps is more comfortable in Spanish, but will occasionally have to search in English. Uh, so these three campaign setups uh, are the best practices that we have whenever you're setting up uh, your own search campaigns for whatever product it is that you're selling. Furthermore, you can see that for each campaign, let's say you have one branded campaign. In the general market, you usually have one branded campaign. For Hispanic campaigns, you'll have three to really capture the entire opportunity there, uh, mixing the, the browser language as well as the keyword language. And that manifests itself similarly on non-branded campaigns. Let's say you're selling shoes you'll have three non-branded shoe campaigns uh, with the same setup as well. And a couple of other considerations to take. Here we've identified, identified six settings that really leverage the power of, of all of these searches. So we already spoke a little bit about language. Um, as a best practice, we always recommend Google search partners. I think this is across the board, whether it's Spanish campaigns or English campaigns. It's just good to, to open up your potential audience to, to some of our partner websites as well. Uh, thirdly, we have devices, and this is a consideration to take. I think Francesca spoke a little bit about just how tech savvy and mobile the Hispanic consumer is. Uh, what we've seen on some of our internal data is that the majority of the traffic, search traffic, is really coming through on mobile devices, and it varies by industry. Um, as a general rule, we, we're saying that today about 72% of traffic is coming through on uh, mobile devices uh, for the campaign setups that I just described before. On locations, we know that the Hispanic audience, all 57 million and counting, are really concentrated in some top DMAs. And so whenever you do launch your search account, be mindful that perhaps Los Angeles may be performing better and so you may want to increase your bids there or perhaps New York or Miami and the rest of the other top DMAs for Hispanics. Uh, fifth, we'll talk about delivery method. Here, we, we like to com commence campaigns and, and set them up to accelerated delivery methods to really get a sense at where your budgets are going in the beginning um, to get a sense of the traffic as well. And so we recommend accelerated delivery so that you know, all right, I know that my branded campaigns are capping on budgets, but my non-branded are not. And you can properly add, uh, allocate your budget. And then fifth, ad rotation. We always recommend optimizing for clicks or conversions simply because you get more insight um, as to your ad creative. And so rather than having three separate ads that rotate standardly, having your ads rotate for clicks or conversions and optimized really gives you a sense of what this audience is really clicking on what are they where are they going on your website and now getting really tactical at the keyword level and this may be counterintuitive to some of the general market uh, behaviors but what we've really seen that works really well for Hispanics is being as broad as possible and you can see in the numbers below each of the keywords the percentage of monthly searches for this particular match type so in broad match about 65 percent 
of searches are coming through on Broadmatch. And this is simply because the Hispanic is a very erratic searcher, um, often misspelling. Um, Broadmatch also helps to identify a lot of negative keywords um, that you can add to your account so that you're spending very efficiently. You'll see as we continue to go down the funnel, phrase match, and in the next slide, broad match modifier and exact match really have the lowest number of monthly searches. If you're a little hesitant to, to start on broad match, at least start on phrase uh, so that you can really get a sense of where the search is, where the search traffic is going on your account. And a couple other considerations to take. I really I mentioned misspellings already. And you can see here our example is shampoo. Uh, look at all the different ways that shampoo is spelled. Uh, correctly, it's spelled um, in the italicized shampoo with the the uh, accent mark on the U, and that only really represents about five percent of the searches on the Spanish browser. If you look at shampoo without the accent, that represents the majority of the searches. So even an accent can really make a difference in the delivery to your campaigns. And then you can see in the, the subsequent examples just how the different misspellings um, have, you know, can be beneficial for driving traffic to your sites. On the right hand side, we always caution for cognates, and these are terms that are spelled the same in Spanish and English. Um, as a best practice, we treat these as English keywords, and so they would be on your English keyword Spanish browser campaign. So as some examples here, for example, the word shampoo, if you have that on your English keyword Spanish browser campaign in broad match, and somebody uses that misspelling shampoo para pelo or hair shampoo it may appear and so what we normally recommend here is to have a really robust list of English keywords so that you don't compete with your general market And so that that completes my portion um, we can really get very tactical and I'm looking forward to some of the questions I will now pass it on to to Tony so that he can walk us through some case studies uh, and some examples of how people have really implemented this Thank you, Leo. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Frances Francesca and Leo for providing such valuable insights on kind of how the U.S. Hispanic market is searching the web. Um, for us, one of the more interesting findings was debunking the myth that Hispanics really only respond to marketing in Spanish. Uh, it's a dated opinion that just doesn't hold true anymore. Uh, and as search continues to grow as a part of our day-to-day -day lives, most Hispanics have become accustomed to consuming content in both English and Spanish. Um, having done our fair share of case studies, we've used these same insights to create some successful AdWords campaigns uh, for our clients, and I'd like to share two of those cases with you. Uh, so the first, I'd like to introduce you to Lakeland Smile Experts. Um, they're a general cosmetic and surgical dental practice located in Lakeland, Florida. They opened their offices in September of 2013 and enlisted in our services shortly thereafter. Uh, initially, they suffered in several areas. They had a lack of tracking across the board, um, expensive cost per clicks for their industry, and an unoptimized website that really just wasn't converting properly. Uh, during the first few months through analysis of their search terms in our, Span in our English campaigns, we noticed that many of the same search terms were also being searched for in Spanish. Uh, so that led us to a decision to create a separate campaign in Spanish that relied uh, pretty much on geo-targeted keywords and other more general keywords that we just directly translated from their English campaigns. Uh, we also installed tracking software to monitor their visitor engagement and behavior, and we used those insights to make some aesthetic changes to specific parts of the website to help with user behavior and help with guiding them to the pages we wanted to get them to. Uh, the results were better than anything we could have expected. Because Florida is a high, uh, is a Hispanic dense state, and cost per clicks in Spanish are notoriously low, we're able to engage bilingual patients searching in either uh, in either language for significantly lower costs. Uh, initially, our goal was to acquire about 30 conversions per month, That's something we achieved actually in our first month uh, with them. Now it's been two years since Lakeland Smile Experts first partnered with White Shark Media, and today our campaigns are generating 126 conversions per month, representing a growth of about 334%. Uh, what's more impressive about that is that we achieved this while also reducing their cost per conversion by 57%. Uh, from $395 per conversion back in 2013 to about $170 per conversion in 2016. Uh, we do believe that without tapping into the U.S. Hispanic market and implementing this bilingual strategy, we wouldn't have been able to achieve these kind of results. 
Next, we have Interviajes, which is a tour operator uh, with services in Washington, D.C., Boston, Philadelphia, and New York. Uh, they promote personalized tours to small groups for affordable prices, uh, and they target the Spanish and Latin American markets. Um, Interviajes was up against seasonality and a highly competitive landscape, uh, and they also weren't doing themselves any favors by targeting all the wrong geographical locations. To turn their marketing efforts around, we began by installing call tracking and conversion tracking. We then used their visitors' location data uh, to target not only the correct locations for them, but also the correct demographics, focusing on customers from Latin America and Spain, uh, and creating ads in Spanish to reach them more effectively. Our strategists also created two remarketing campaigns, one targeting Latin America and one and the other targeting New York. We began... Uh, excuse me, when we began shifting uh, Interviajes targeting, we also shifted their marketing focus to their better value propositions. Things like that their tours are, person are personalized for each tour group, uh, that they cost less than 40% of uh, what their competitors are charging, and that they can have fully Spanish tours. Uh, this increased engagement with their ads dramatically, um, and then we were able to use our remarketing ads to reinforce those same values across the board. Our results, again, spoke for themselves. Uh, going from April 2014 to April 2016, we've increased their monthly conversions by a whopping 188% while also keeping costs low. We have several dozen other studies that we could uh, go through that reinforce these same kind of behaviors. But the point we're trying to make here is that the potential is there. Uh, all you really have to do is go out and capture it. For this reason, uh, as Ben was talking about earlier, uh, we'd like to extend our help even further. Um, as of today, Wireshark Media is actually launching a new product, and we want you guys to be the first in line. Uh, we've experienced so much success implementing AdWords campaigns in Spanish for local businesses who've plateaued in their English AdWords campaigns and in their mar normal marketing efforts. And because of the success, we want to offer your business these same types of bilingual campaigns. Uh, first, to get you started, we're including a free marketing analysis of your potential for U.S. Hispanic success. That way we can ensure that this kind of opportunity is actually a good fit for you. Uh, in addition to this analysis, if it is a good fit for you, um, our promotion also includes two free lead generating uh, landing pages. One using your existing content in English and the other will be in Spanish. But that's not all. Uh, to get this all started and to help you get going, we'll be translating that uh, English landing page to Spanish for free for up to 500 words. Uh, to take advantage of this promotion, for the next two hours, our representatives will be on the phones ready to take your call. Right now, what we wanted to do was open up the floor to take some of the questions we received during the chat. So right now, I'm going to switch to that, and Francesca and, and Leo will, will answer those for you. All right, so the first question we have, uh, Francesca and Leo, is if online sources are the preferred way Hispanics make purchase decisions, uh, how important is it to translate my website? I think we spoke about this a little bit earlier, so I think it varies by one category, two, the, the assets that you guys have in place. We saw a couple of things in the research, which is, one, they're obviously okay engaging with your site if it's, if it's in English, because uh, they're comfortable using English online. We did see that added value is provided when the content is in Spanish, and we've seen so many advertisers even take the time to translate that, and it's really indicative of the fact that it worked for them. and and they see a lot of traffic coming from there. So I think it's if you have the capabilities of doing so, it's it's definitely a win. Um, it varies by category. If you're more of a visual category and the Hispanic consumer doesn't necessarily need the content in, in language, then it might not be the best um, strategy for you guys. Perfect. Uh, the next question we have here is, uh, can Hispanics uh, be reached with English-only campaigns? And is this a practice that you would only use for particular industries? Um, so for we kind of see the opportunity and just how we describe those three different campaign settings. If you took a, you can do this on your phone right now if you want. Take a look at Google search and just search for one word. Let's just say car and see what results you'll get. You'll probably get English results, but if you switch your browsers to Spanish, you're going to get completely different results. And so this is the value add of having Spanish campaigns: is you're amplifying and getting a new audience. And so it may be that your English campaigns do get very acculturated or Hispanics that really only want to speak English, and that's fine, and you may get some of those. However, you're still missing out on the whole world of 
Spanish language searches or English language searches on the Spanish browser. That makes perfect sense. Um, the next question we have is, is it important to, oh, and it's from Peter. This is, uh, is, it, is it important to include a view my website in Spanish link at the top or uh, can you just rely on being in the browser to switch the search for you? you so the question is, the, the link is on the actual website? Correct. So they're asking if it's important to have a link that, that allows you to switch from English to Spanish, or is it going to, is you know, the browser going to take care of that itself and ask to translate if you search for it in Spanish, I guess is, is what it was that they're trying to get to. Got it. Yeah, so we, we do recommend that, that sites have that toggle and give the user the option. Um, it may be that the browser may not um, change the language based on the browser setting and just as a safety precaution it is great to have the toggle between Spanish and English or any other language on your website. Uh, in addition if you know that you do have that um, another strategy that we've seen out there is to call that out on your ads or maybe introduce a site link um, which is a little portion of text on your ad that users can click on it can take them directly to the Spanish portion of your site or the URL in Spanish. And I, just to add to that, I think um, for a long time advertisers didn't necessarily have a consistent view of where that kind of clicking button between English and Spanish was. You'll see it in the bottom of some web pages, in, the, in one of the left or right hand corners of other pages. And I think at this point we've really reached a consensus where um, that top right hand corner is really the best spot. I think consumers are definitely more used to it at this point. Um, so having that either in Espanol or even um, the different language options available on that top right hand corner is probably the easiest way for consumers to find it. And just to reiterate what we mentioned earlier about creating that seamless experience when that content does because some brands don't necessarily have the ability to change everything into Spanish on their landing page. When that content does change from one tab to the other and Maybe in one telecom brand, you know, the, the last conversion page is in English. You know, have that call out. When, you, when it does change language, have a little page come up and say, you know, the content's about to change to English. Um, are you okay with that? So even making that little, you know, added value um, will improve that experience for the consumer. Great. Um, all right. And we have time for one more. So we're going to take this one, which is how are you using Spanish YouTube content to take advantage of how Hispanics view YouTube videos? And is that something that you guys are seeing? Similar to what we, we've done so much work around the YouTube um, you know, content being consumed by digital Hispanics at this point. We know that they're spending so much time on digital video year over year. A lot of it's also coming from mobile devices to no surprise. Um, and what I would say is we've seen a lot of similar findings around how they're consuming content online. So the same way that we're seeing that they're really bilingual on online websites overall and search behavior, it kind of holds true on the YouTube space overall as well. First of all, you know, YouTube is a, the second biggest search engine. So we're seeing search behavior happen in both English and in Spanish for the digital Hispanic online. And we're also seeing the content consumption reflective of that, that Hispanics really love to watch on YouTube, such as comedy, food recipes, beauty how-to tutorials, and um, soccer content. And a lot of that's happening in both languages. And there's a number of different um, insights we have to share about that. You can always get in contact with us. Perfect. Um, well, again, I'd like to thank um, Leo and Francesca and Ben for taking the time to, to be with us today. Um, same with the attendees. We hope you guys found this webinar useful, and we hope you learned something new today. Uh, you will all be receiving the webinar recording and the slides via email shortly. Uh, but don't forget that you can always email us with any of the questions that we didn't get to answer today. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.